right, we'll call the meeting to order. Yes. Uh, no members of the public attending. Um, so we'll move on to considering the minutes from April 6th. I'll move approval. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, great. Now we get to hear from Councilwoman Megan Alter about the strategic plan. Yeah, and let me um, get the up slides first. up first here. Are you guys all seeing that? We're seeing that. Seeing yep. the. Yep. Okay, well, they can see it there. Right, we just have to figure out a way to. And we can, we can, I think we can get it to IT to match up with the rest of the audio. This is just ridiculous. I just kind of need to see, how do we advance? It, yeah, it'll be this right arrow here. Uh, let's see. Right, but if I don't know. Yep, where you are here. Now we're on that screen, so maybe okay. we can pull one up. Okay. It's up, but why don't we see it here? Right arrow. For Pete's sakes. There we go. Okay, I don't know if that's, is it going to? Slideshow, is that what we want? Yeah. Wait, we can hit right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, it's moving over there. I'm just going to pay attention to it from up there because okay. it's not. If I look at this screen, it's not working. It does work on this one. Okay. All right. Technical We're just going to. Apologies. This is called tap dancing until ready. <laughs> All right, with a few jazz hands thrown in. All right, so hi, my name is Megan Alter, and um, I'm Mayor Pro Tem, which is kind of like Deputy Dog, but um, basically, I'm a council member here, and. Um, I get the privilege to come and talk to you guys about the strategic plan that we put together and approved, I believe it was in December, um, and that's going to kind of guide the decisions that we make and um, the priorities as well, the way in which sort of um, council has said this is how we want to view things um, in different priority areas, and then Jeff takes that and brings it to staff so that then there's a sense from staff about how to prioritize the different uh, priorities. And one of the things that I think is helpful both for staff, ourselves, and hopefully the public, the more that we actually flex this muscle and use the strategic plan and talk about it actually in council meetings is the way in which it becomes um, a guide for us to help make our decisions. Um, and that's really crucial because too often it can seem like, ooh, air, that's a good idea, right? And this way it helps keep us disciplined and focused because we've gone through this process and so that's why also Jeff and, and, and team all felt that this was a good idea for then us to come in and disseminate it to the commissions so that you too have a sort of a sense of like, how does, how does the work that you do fit in as well? So that's kind of the, the logic that's going on for why I'm here. 
So one of the things that we began with, I mean, obviously the introduction, hi, hi, how are you? But the environmental scan is actually really important. Um, and it really has like, what are, what's the city facing? And so <clears throat> in this day and age, there are a significant number of challenges, um, budgetary through the way that um, we're dealing with state property tax reform um, that ends up really impacting the local budget since um, as one example, uh, there's been a gradual step down from the way in which um, multifamily properties are being taxed. And once upon a time, they could be taxed at a, great, at a much greater rate that helped our coffers. And now that is no longer the case. And it means that um, there is less income coming in through that. So it means, that, again, the city has to be very strategic and thoughtful about the way in which it's spending money. Um, so that's a challenge. Uh, increasingly, the preemption of local control by the state. Um, you know, there is no magic wand to um, solve for equity and social justice. However, by um, surfacing it and talking about it and trying to imbue our thinking about um, equity, we can start to address it and um, get get better at. Um, sort of making things more equitable in the city, but there are persistent challenges to that. Um, we need to continue attracting workforce. Um, we're still living with ongoing COVIDs of, Im uh, COVIDs of impact. Uh-huh. Impacts of COVID and, and honestly kind of calibrating. Does this mean is this our new normal or is it that this is still lagging through pandemic conditions that we're moving out of. And so that's still kind of a bit of an unknown, but we still know that this is really, there is so much that changed that we are now still dealing with sort of this weird hybrid of things from before COVID, things during, and now that we're moving out, what does that look like? Um, and certainly we're dealing also with inflation and economic pressures, both federally at a state level and locally. Climate change continues to be horrific. Um, regional population growth and more demand for services is absolutely something that we're finding uh, here in Iowa City and Johnson County, especially as in many uh, situations, um, other parts of the state or indeed other states are less welcoming for people. And so people are coming to Iowa City knowing that there um, perhaps is quite literally a safer haven for them here, but that puts more of a burden on um, the services that um, are here to help people, and so we need to acknowledge that. Um, we have outdated facilities, which I think every staff member is going, uh-huh, um, that, that we need to do um, major work on, and yet there's also that perception-wise about, well, why are you renovating a building? Or as I've heard most recently, why is there being a facility study of City Hall when there's all this other need, right? But it's not an either or, it's a yes and, but these are constant kind of tensions. Um, and then there's a significant influx of federal funding opportunities. Yay! So, <laughs> so there is that, but we there's, there's some pretty strong um, things in place that we have to grapple with um, as a community as staff, as commission members, and electeds. Um, so we decided that the best thing to do was to, in the face of all of this, to create um, a strategic plan. And um, how we went about this um, was that you, we begin with value statements. What, are, what, what matters to us as a community um, and what matters to the community? Um, and then thinking about that is, how are we going to impact the community? And then what are the resources needed to execute this strategy? So going from vision and values as the core to then what might that look like and then how do we implement it? So our values. Um, hopefully these are fairly familiar to you, but we have um, three buckets, if you will. Racial equity, social justice, and human rights. Um, climate action, partnerships, and engagement. Um, and as you'll see, these are indeed kind of shot through in the many areas that we were looking at strategically. So 
one of the things that I thought was really cool about this strategic process was it was like, what does success look like? But rather than it being, it's like, it was honed into each of these values. And so what do we know? How do we know? How will we know if we've achieved our vision for equity, social justice, and human rights? And um, these were sort of the statements that came out of it. This is aspirational, but it's also written in present tense. So these are the things that we want to get to, and we hope that by the pieces that we've put in place, those will, that'll be the rungs of the ladder that will get us to these um, places. That we welcome cultural diversity. We celebrate it. It's not the, the word tolerate always really bothers me, right? And so I think that it was very important. It's not just like, oh yeah, we're okay with it, I guess. It's, no, we celebrate it, we welcome it, we invite it. Um, we acknowledge and commemorate accurate historical cultural perspectives. We un This is huge and it is very aspirational, but we can get every resident to understand how systemic inequities have disadvantaged some populations and these same residents have the skills to disrupt bias. I think, I mean, that alone is worth the price of admission. So I'll let you read the others, um, but these are the markers of how we um, know if we've achieved our vision for this. Um, in terms of climate action, same question, just turned, tweaked to this particular, oh, I just undid this. I keep messing with the computer. Sorry. Um, so for climate action, it's that the world looks to Iowa City to copy our innovative carbon reduction strategies. Um, we have net zero greenhouse gas emissions achieved across all sectors. Every household is prepared for extreme heat, cold, weather events caused by climate change. Um, and as a side note, the thing that's interesting about each of these categories is that actually they all really mutually inform one another and um, especially in terms of thinking about individual households and the preparation that they have for these extreme weather events. I mean, this is also what's known as economic just, or not economic, sorry, environmental justice. Um, it is absolute, the, the, the people who are hit the hardest through climate action, or sorry, not climate action, climate change events um, often are um, people of color, uh, lower socioeconomic, because they, just, they don't have the means to, you know, um, get their homes and their um, environments prepared for these kinds of events, nor are they economically in a position to be able to weather it afterwards. So this is really key. Um, we have a biodiverse environment found throughout our, our community. Our children's air, water, and soil quality is better than it was for us. Residents choose to take climate actions and sense of uh, health, safety, and community are improved for all. So these are large, but we think that they're possible. Uh, partnerships and engagement, uh, I'll give you a moment just to look at them because sometimes having me rattle them off while they're in front of you can be annoying. But I think that um, especially for um, commissioners, staff, electeds, as well as the people who are, you know, engaged with the work that a local community and a local uh, government does, I think one and all of us can say that the tenor of discourse has deteriorated. Um, the ways in which um, decisions are made are not always transparent, and so those two are among the biggies. But um, it, just that there's a way in which there's channels of communication, not just one way. Um, and, and that it's done with a sense of purpose that, that, that people are listening on both sides. Um, so one of the questions that um, we thought of as counselors or is uh, what are some examples of how we can carry out the value, but it's, it's also a pertinent one for the commission too. It might not be at a, you know, 30,000 foot level, but certainly to look at it at whatever scale is appropriate for your own board and commission here with public art. Um, I think, you know, it, it, it helps to sort of start thinking through that um, lens of bigger picture. Um, and one of the things actually, I was on HCDC and then I went to Parks and Rec to do this same thing. And the thing that's awesome to me is like, 
this is not a new thing. People going, oh my God, I never thought of that before. It's like, that's how you're doing your work actually is sort of like, how is the actions that we're deciding on um, and projects that we're approving, how is it actually fitting into a bigger picture? So this isn't anything new, but it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so the different areas and um, action steps. Um, so from these vision statements and ways in which we are hoping our actions will um, bring good results are through neighborhood and housing, mobility, economy, safety and well-being. Those were sort of the categories when we did one of those visioning where it was like big post-it things and then put stickies or write on it and then our facilitators took this mess um, and then was able to kind of categorize it. So these are the areas that they came um, came to say these are the, the major areas to, that we should be focusing on so that it makes, um, so that there's a, a logic to it. So we have the vision, the why, which is long-term and aspirational. We're getting into the what, which is long-term and guiding, but it's going to provide the general direction for the implementation of core services and strategic action items. So if you look back one, that's what we're talking about here. Here are these areas. Um, and then the action steps are the how. They're immediate and actionable. Highlights pressing high impact items that will receive discretionary resources and require partnerships and collaboration to, execu to be executed by a specific timeline. So the other thing that I think is important about the way that we approached the strategic plan was the facilitators loaded in is only good until you actually do something with this and and really really impress that upon us and so I think again that's ultimately why I'm here right now and why the other counselors are talking to commissions too so that there's this awareness of like why is it that we're doing what we're doing um, in terms of vision and saying here's the pathways to it well in so many ways you're the ones who are approving like what kind of art gets done? Where? When? The, that's, that's the action steps right here. So neighborhoods and housing. Um, I'll let you read the vision on your own, and I think Wendy will make this available. I think you can send it out mm -hmm. to everybody after this. Um, but we have a vision statement. And it, again, it's lofty, but it's a little bit more specific about what does a neighborhood look like and how does it fit in with other neighborhoods. Um, and then we have several strategies that go to, with that. Um, we're going to update the city comp plan and the zoning code uh, to encourage compact and diverse housing types and land uses. We're going to partner in projects that serve as models for desired future development. That's actually, I'm happy to report, that's starting. We've got uh, the 3D housing that's um, going underway um, out on the northeast side, I believe. Um, our third strategy is to create inviting plus active outdoor spaces with unique and engaging recreation offerings. And to uh, our fourth strategy to address the unique needs of vulnerable populations and LMI neighborhoods. Um, but all under the umbrella of having a vibrant neighborhood that has its own character, that has walkability and whatnot. Under mobility, um, so this is how, uh, transportation, how are we going to get from where we need to go, when we need to go. And that um, it's a multiple mode um, vision that you can walk, bike, or bus at least half the time. And that these trips are fueled by clean energy. Um, we're absolutely, and I will call out Laura Burgess with much admiration by name because she's really, really um, being a champion for regional collaboration to create a multimodal network um, that as Iowa City Councilors, we've committed to this as well. It's an uphill battle at the moment, but we honestly think that if we just say, well, it's really uphill, what you're going to do, and then do nothing, ensures its um, end result. So we're, we're going to take this up and use our political capital as we can to help get buy-in from other uh, municipalities. So strategies for this are to expand the access and convenience of climate-friendly and regionally connected public transit to design and maintain complete streets that are comfortable and safe for all users. So definitely um, strengthening and expanding um, our cycling lanes uh, and safety um, components. Um, 
I think there's going to have to be a large messaging piece too about getting drivers to understand that. Um, so moving on, strategy three is to grow and prioritize bike and pedestrian accommodations. So um, in terms of the economy, we have several. Um, chief among them are to reinforce Iowa City as a premier community to locate and grow a business. And we just received a small business award from, was it? The Nine? Small Business Administration. There we go. Yeah absolutely named um, <laughs> yeah so no it's it's a fantastic award and it's great to help continue some motivation and some excitement about Iowa City but we need to do the work as well to, to maintain that um, we need to ensure appropriate infrastructure for future business growth and development cultivate a strong entrepreneurial and small business ecosystem with a focus on creating new pathways to success for um, systematically marginalized populations. And I'm sure that most of you are aware, but we actually have in the works right now, there's a $4 million ARPA um, award for underestimated businesses um, to do basically this. Um, and so the the projects, the RF, the, it was, it's not an RFP. It's a statement of interest. Thank you. SOL is to um, try to encourage partnerships so that it's not just I want to be able to stand up my own business, but how can you actually create something that like can can be a collective um, and to you know the investment in this will grow 20 more businesses, not simply to say we're helping one business. So. I think that that's an exciting thing. Uh, build Iowa City's image as the greatest small art city for the arts and to strengthen Iowa's, Iowa River's role as a signature community amenity and tourism generator. Um, and so those two, I think, actually really fit in with this particular commission for what it's worth. I mean, the thing that's cool about this is it's like we've got these generalized, like here, there's these strategies, but then if you see a place where you and the work that you're doing fits in, it does not need to be dictated by us. It's, you know, this is the work of what strategic um, planning does, is, is you can take that ball and run with it um, because there is still flexibility built in, um, but there are certain hallmarks of some of these strategies that definitely fit clearly under um, park, uh, public art. Safety and well-being. Um, I think that this is one where uh, it may touch less specifically on the work that this commission does, but uh, it is, you know, singularly, uh, singularly important um, to have, um, excuse me, and expand access and convenience of climate-friendly and re regionally connected public transit, to design and maintain complete streets that are comfortable and safe for all users and to grow and prioritize bike and pedestrian accommodations. Notice this is under safety and well-being, not necessarily under transportation, because it's just, again, it's a more of a holistic understanding of what this looks like. Um, and I would say in that vision statement, when talking about um, in the middle of that paragraph, it talks about having inviting spaces for social interaction, exercise, and regeneration are equitably located throughout the community and are lively with activity and use. And I see that as a place, too, where, you know, like the, am I right in remembering that, y are the public benches, the art, be the benches that will have art? Downtown district. Is that, yeah. I thought there was one that was going to be in the South District, though. There is, there right? Is. There is. Yeah, that's and is that, that's, yeah, it's so that's now. the type of thing that's going on that I think I'm like, that fits in here and it's safety and well-being. You know, so I just think it's exciting to think of the numerous ways that there's intersection between the vision and um, the work that you're doing. And did I actually, oh no, okay. I was like, is that done? I was like, no, no, it couldn't be. Um, so the resources are the tools to get it done. So um, we need, you know, the nuts and bolts of how to be able to, to get all of this work done. And we need the facilities, the equipment, and the technology. Um, we need the people. And we need the finances. So those are some central things. So like, how are you going to get her done? And um, some of that is going to fall on staff. Some of that's going to fall on council. Some, a lot of it is going to be through feedback through the public and in some cases. Who knows? Um, 
You know, there's certain um, revenue levers that we have that we haven't pulled yet that we may need to, given that the budget is getting tight in these next couple of years. Um, and so the will of the public may come into play as well. Um, certainly during budget time, um, they're obviously they're public meetings so that the public can weigh in. Most choose not to, but um, early, I, I suspect very much that um, people are gonna be paying a, a lot of attention to saying, oh, there's a full day explanation of, from every department on the first Saturday of the year? I think I'm going to come, right? So that they can get involved. And if nothing else, I definitely am gonna be emailing all the folks who have been emailing me to say, hey, this is how you get involved. So financially, it's like this is too, is not done in a vacuum. But these are the things that are going to help get work done. And I will say that federal dollars, um, it is true. I went to a conference with the mayor oh, a few months ago, and um, the Biden administration has a lot of dollars that are coming out to do post-pandemic help. And it is about sort of resilience and infrastructure. And um, there's going to be some really interesting grants coming through. And so um, at the same time that we need to address you know, Maslow's hierarchy of need, we need to make sure that people's absolute need essentials are taken care of. To have a thriving city, we also need to have pleasure and enjoyment. And um, public art, to me, is as is is incredibly important and so i think that that's something that certainly staff knows to their core and will be also looking for those kind of you know are there federal dollars to help you know make a livable city so it's exciting um the cool thing as well and actually i am sort of getting to the end here but the cool thing is that like we're not doing this in a vacuum so much of what we have put forth in terms of our priorities are also aligned with Better Together 2030, University of Iowa, ECI COG, um, and the Department of Division Master Plans. And so there are opportunities to collaborate and, and strengthen a good idea and make it a great idea and actually go back and say, oh, and we've got the tools and the resources and the capacity and the people to help make this happen. So. Um, the things that are not in the strategic plan, and staff can definitely talk to this, it was funny. Um, there was some person back on between. 99% of staff's everyday work and um, is not included here. The unexpected challenges are definitely not included here. Timely opportunities. Um, sometimes there's something that comes up that it's like, I, if we don't bite on this now, you know, we might regret this. And major ongoing projects. Those are kind of in their own planning category so I felt like this was a I mean I love this slide deck because it's so just like clear but I feel like I provided it was a rather choppy intro to it but I hope that it kind of gives you a sense of like the overarching way in which we're moving forward um, as a council and how we're trying to um, be thoughtful about the what comes to us um, help give a sense of like what matters to us, what have we heard from the community, um, and then be able to push that and, and allow you to kind of take some ownership of it as well. Um, but I hope that made sense is ultimately what I'm saying. And then to ask if there are any questions. No? That's great, thank you. Though. Awesome, well thank you so very much. And I'm going to not touch coming. any of your computer. <laughs> I'm like, it was enough that I had the button. To I think I figured progress. out what happened. Oh. It was that screen one, screen, screen two, two thing. thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for letting me pop in and do this. And um, my name is Megan Alter. So just let me know, email me, or look me up and get contact <coughs> info. I think my cell number's on the website and all that good stuff for Wendy. Yep. There's multiple ways. Definitely. Right. Thank you so much. You. Oh, no, sorry. no, I'm good. Thank you so much for coming, me. Yeah, yeah, well, and my final thing is just to say thank you for doing what you guys do. Um, the art in this town is amazing. And it really does, like, just brighten the day to, like, walk and, oh, my God, there's a, this, you know, mural or, you know, statue or what have you. 
So thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's scoot out and let you guys get on with it. Okay. Um, not much left on the agenda. We so at the last meeting, it was suggested to move the uncommitted matching grant funds to the art maintenance, but that just needed a separate motion. Yeah, it right? actually needed to be on an agenda and publicized to be officially um, uh, to be done the right way. Um, so I know we talked about it, and there was um, consensus that. Um, the money that we did not commit for matching grants, and remember, you'll recall we had $30,000. We decided to award 22,210, I think it is. Um, and uh, that left 7,000 some. And so um, we have before us the consideration of whether we want to officially move that into our um, uh, art maintenance fund and I do have some slides Let's see if I can get them on the right screen Wendy, um, that would be for this year right not forever correct yeah yeah <coughs> share screen Work. do you see a budget on your screens? You see what's Not up yet. There. It might be. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about it. This is just the weirdest thing. So I'm stopping sharing on that screen. I can't do it from this screen. This is where the spreadsheet is. So let me try again. Screen two. You can see it, it's small. Okay, you can see it's, oh, so oh, it's how do I get it big? <sighs> Is anybody a pro with this? I don't even see the make big thing. Screen you are sharing, dock to the top, make, This is the most annoying thing. I'm so sorry. Please. So here I have what Zoom people are seeing, but the sh screen sharing option, when I hit this mm -hmm. here. Does it, it hit the little arrow next to it. Hit the arrow. advanced I mean these are the slides I want to show they're they're right here so it's screen one not screen so hit screen one click on that okay then we just have to get that that larger it's, uh... <laughs> and I'm controlling it with this laptop okay hit the over here hit one of those and see what they do Recording to the cloud. It's the recording button. Okay, is the, enhanced yeah. encryption. That's, I want a full screen. I'm sorry, I'm not I, I feel terrible about this, but they make us do things they don't teach us how to do. Mm -hmm. um, can you? See, you can't see. Well, this is what you see on your screens, right? Mm -hmm. Well. Is the gist of the conversation moving that? Yeah. 
7000 it's, it's 7790 dollars <laughs> that's the re remainder to move into the art maintenance fund which we already had um, about six thousand dollars in um, which would give us thirteen thousand or so dollars total in our art maintenance fund and then I also have slides on here that show a number of projects that we have our art rehab professional out taking a look at that include will include the Benton Hill uh, Park Entry sign, which you can't read the face of anymore. Um, it includes the Kovalev sculptures in Willow Creek Park. They're wooden, kind of rough hewn, but really interesting human figures, and there's about five of them. Um, what they really need is new um, protection at, the, at their base, so we're getting a quote on that. Um, there is one called One's Reality, which is down on the corner of uh, Riverside Drive and Highways 1 and 6 near the equipment building. So it would be on the southeast corner of that area. We actually have had a member of the public, I wish I could show it to you, I have it here on, a, on slides. We had a member of the public call and, and say they would be willing to contribute $1,000 to having that uh, renovated. And I said, wait, we've, we've got a little budget. Let's, um, let's just get some um, info on what it would take to, um, to get that done. And uh, so that's another one. Um, let me see my slide. We can start here. a City of Iowa City Public Art Fund endowment. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. Um, and then there is the ever-present um, literary walk where um, I, I got um, an estimate for replacing um, the brass plaque that honored Rita Dove, a poet, which was in the sidewalk in front of the Brain Sciences Building right out here at the corner of Gilbert and Iowa Avenue. Um, there was a quote from Greg Lefebvre, the guy who did it in the first place, um, for replacing that plaque and because they don't have the original um, e either electronic file or mold whatever it is they use to make the the thing in the first place they would have to um, reproduce that original work and to do it in cast bronze 24 inches or 32 inches would be either sixty seven hundred dollars or ten thousand eight hundred dollars um, and <clears throat> We've had an indication from City of Lit that they would be interested in partnering on that, and I think. Um, I some cable staff. I'll get them to fix oh, okay. Um, and I think because the university was responsible for it being gone, um, if we could split that three ways, that might make that um, quite a bit more reasonable as well. Um, on the Lit Walk, as you know, there are 48 or 50 other plaques that are in various stages of um, repair being needed. And, and um, Greg Lefebvre, the artist, uh, had said probably the best thing to do would be to work with the local mason um, and also metal refinisher. I think it has to do with the screen one and screen two issue okay. Okay. and Facebook. Gotcha. I don't even know why that went off, but <laughs> yeah, it is it's on. on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, so we need to do that. Um, and then there was one more as well, uh, which was Birds in Flight. And it's um, a really interesting piece on the Sycamore Greenway, um, which is um, long poles, probably eight or 10 feet tall. Ron, I think your um, team has fixed these in the past. They're um, balanced, I believe, on kind of a ball joint if I know, if I understand this right. And some of those, um, oh my gosh, there it is. Yeah. And some of those have not um, been working correctly. So our, our rehab guy is looking at those as well. So we'll have the potential for several, several projects and have hard decisions to make on how to spend even that 13 or whatever thousand dollars it is. 
So what happened here? I'm not sure why. I just kind of clicked on it again and it popped back up. It <laughs> usually happens with the tech person, right? Um, but I was just going to make sure that it was sharing, which it looks like maybe. It we had some other screens up, and I know it was. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, at least it looked like it was. Okay, good. So we are screen sharing. Okay, there. I was going to, I think I've made this comment before, so you can tell me to shut up if I'm a broken record. Um, Thanks. But with, I guess I can't say I'm super familiar with the history of the literary walk and who did what and was responsible for what, but it seems that it, it's more than, I mean, like th this one read a dove plaque may be replaced, but it's going to be an ongoing conversation in the next years. And so getting kind of. Yeah, I mean, a formal. And I, I don't know. It also it feels a little, of all the three major players, like, why is it our budget, when it was like the university's project, type of a. You know, yeah. like I'm happy. I think it's great. I'm happy to contribute to its ongoing maintenance, um, but I also at the same time think it's a little unfair for us to shoulder the burden of maintaining a project that we didn't necessarily spearhead ourselves. There should be a maintenance plan. A shared yeah. maintenance plan. But it was, a, I mean, it was a project that, that the city and the university worked together on, right? So, okay. right, so it was a joint project at the time. Um, I don't exactly know uh, how we worked through uh, developing the plaques. Um, I think that was outside of the contract. They just put the, they, they knew what they needed. And they had, you know, they, they cast it in the concrete as far as where it needed to be at. But I, I don't remember. I can go back and look in our files and see what happened there. Um, now that we have a cost on this, Wendy, I'll, I, I, think, I think that we can reach out to the university and basically say this is on their dime. Um, they, we had a temporary use right away agreement with them to, to be able to do the brain sciences building. That's the project that ended up dis disappearing in. And so um, I, I think that's where we start. And if we come back and have to m make an offer to split it three ways or whatever, we can mm -hmm. do that. But I think initially we start with university. This is your issue. Do you know who there? Just this is probably enough. The, the agreements that we have are with the university, with the University of Iowa. So David Keft is who we'll, we'll reach out to to start off, and I mean he's the one that signs those agreements that we have with them um, in regards to the construction projects, and and that's I mean that's where the that's where it disappeared from. Right was uh, they were occupying the right of way, um, and and that's where it just then that's when it disappeared. So yeah, um, the. I f was finally able on one computer to hit the left arrow and come up with a slide on the right computer, but this also shows some of the issues that we have going on with the plaques set into the concrete here. And uh, th this is the one that would involve the um, the special caulking and sealing and um, and perhaps even recoding the outside, although this was taken in the middle of the winter and what you see there is salt residue. It's not quite as ruinous as it looks. Um, and then these are a couple of other others. The one on the left is one um, up near the Phillips Hall where an actual piece of bronze is missing, that post. It's actually a signpost. Um, and that part is missing. I don't have a an idea on the replacement for that. For a quick point of clarification, so for I, as an educated guest, the the bronze plaques themselves, minus the dove, because of extenuating circumstances, are not needing replaced. It's the stonework surrounding them. It's concrete and ceiling around. Ceiling, them. Okay. This For the most does, part, this one does. Yeah. Okay. You can see there is some damage, like on the right one here, the corner of that probably gets scraped in snow removal, something like that. There, there are a few that have some minor things, but that's that's livable. Um, well, I mean, the, the issue, I mean, so I mean, the issue at hand here is is because of the lack of maintenance in regards to the sealant around the the plaques. Water has gotten underneath them, right? In the winter, full freeze thaw happens, it's lifted those plaques up, right? So they're no longer flush in the concrete. Um, you know, so ultimately. You're, you're looking at replacement of concrete panels and basically resetting these in, which I don't even, I don't even know how that works because I, I'm not exactly certain how these are set in here. Um, or, or rethinking this and, and, and maybe removing these from the pavement and putting them in more of a vertical orientation. Um, 
there was a project that we had proposed in the CIP uh, this year in regards to, you know, basically jazzing up the Iowa Avenue, uh, which is kind of hurtful because I was here when this project started, so it hasn't been that long ago. But, uh, <laughs> um, but, it, but, it, uh, but I, I think it, it did make the cut just because of the budgetary constraints that we're under right now. But I, I think that um, as we move forward and, and look at some of there's, there's other issues in the quarter that need to be addressed, and so um, that will raise up eventually. But clearly, in the short term, we, we have to deal with the the art as it is at hand and, and work through the maintenance on those pieces. It might be helpful for us to go ahead and get a quote, work with a mason and metal refinisher person to find out what it would cost just to fix them as they are. And that might help move this from one burner to the next. Potentially, yep. Well, it, um, I'm also wondering if there are just things that, and again, it's more of a temporary fix, but is there a way to at least um, perhaps, you know, I don't know, maybe they need a new um, coat of wax, or if there's any sort of smaller maintenance that could be done. Um, I mean, clearly the larger maintenance needs to be done, you know, period. But of uh, just thinking about the project as a whole or specific, you know, um, pieces uh, that might have, you know, been damaged, um, you know, the one on the right in terms of its integrity. Um, if there are things that can be done on a smaller scale um, in terms of kind of conservation. Mm -hmm things as well. Again, it may not be, it may be neither here nor there, um, but, you know, well, I'm just nice trying to think is, of this as like, what can we do, what can we sort of do in our capacity, but also think of it as a longer term project or, yeah. I think because it's nice a longer term project because there are so many panels, you know. Right. But it seems like we need to answer those questions yes. of, does this need to become vertical versus horizontal? You know, what is going to be the cost? You know, what's it, you know, how long is this, the anticipation of keeping this work of art? You know, we usually work from 50, a 50 year mark, you know, when, when we're talking to students about materials and things like that. And so, you know, I would like, what is the 50 year plan for this bronze? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm what would be that cost? I think the university would want to know that over time. Yeah. But even 10 years would be good. Yeah. And they've been in, did they go in 2000, Ron? Around then? Yeah, it depends on which block it was, but it would have been between 2000 and 2003. Mm -hmm. okay. This is good for a 20 year, um, given winters. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the other thing that the Rita Dove plaque if the originals and the ability to recreate them is not there, we're operating from a place of preserving and prolonging, um, you know, versus once these are gone, they're gone. Um, versus like, we can't, um, I mean, unless we like make the financial commitment to like do what we did for the Rita Dove plaque for all of them, what we have is what we have. So it seems like we need to find out what the short-term solution is, reseal around the concrete, mm -hmm. if it needs a code of something to protect it in the short term until a future streetscape project where the concrete's being replaced anyway, so you can either reset them or move them vertically. That's the future yeah. conversation. I think so too. And the thing that's so nice is the artist for this um, is still very willing to consult with whatever local contractor we would have, the mason or the metal refinisher to, to work with and. The same artist at all of them? Uh, yeah, it, well his, <coughs> sorry, his shop. <laughs> I, have the, I have the power now. Um, <laughs> must be. Um, so, okay, we'll get to work on, on that. Um, Can you scroll back in your presentation to some of the ones you were describing when you first started? Usually. <laughs> Let's see here. The this is the one the one called One's Reality down at the equipment building. Nineteen eighty two. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this is Birds in Flight on the Sycamore Trail, Greenway. And those just need 
something at the base you said no it's at the top so the those there's like a, a ball bearing fitting that sits on the top that allows those to move or okay. rotate and all those ball bearing fittings are basically rusted out and seized up that would be seems relatively simple to, yeah. to make it great again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The birds are no longer flying. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're, they're taxidermy. stuck in flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then these are the Kovalev sculptures. That's where you were saying at the base. Yeah. Most of the problem is at the base, close to the ground. So a little landscaping would be good. And then he's also um, going to be recommending I think a sealant of some sort to slow down that deterioration of the wood. Dog pee prevention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Marsh's dog. Actually, that was in the fire. <laughs> um, and this is a wider view of it along the trail. It's a little harder to see, but on the edges there. Cool. And that was. <laughs> it's not a very good picture. It's. It's, um, I don't know how to describe what's happened to the park side of the sign, but it's, it's weathered to a point that you can't see there's any lettering on the other side. You can see how it's supposed to look in the left, but right now you can't read that at all with what's out there. So I, I apologize, Wendy, that's an older picture I sent. Yeah. So is that, do you think an issue of cleaning or like a more extensive replacement? Probably cleaning, I would think. Yeah, I, I think so. It's like it's rusted or, or aged to the point that okay. the two types of metal are now the same color instead of two different colors. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited about, I think it's, it's good long-term planning and to be good stewards of the money we've already spent on public art projects that have meaning to, you know, to communities. So I'm, I don't know, I think it's a good but it would be really good to have an overall plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, 100 percent. For the whole collection. I mean, I, the, yeah. there must be 150 pieces in the whole city-owned collection. Well, and then you know, moving forward, you assume there will be more, so it would be good to just get something going and really. Yeah, have a prioritized list and a plan for the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the idea of having regular, um, you know, making the conservation a thing, right? Where it's you're doing the work, but then it's like, hey, what are we doing this year? Um, you know, what project isn't, you know, mm -hmm. um, having that be a bit more of a public um, celebratory thing versus like, I don't know, we finally fixed it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to have something really as steady as one of our projects going um, from year to year. Mm -hmm. What got a facelift this year? Ben Hill Park sign, you know. What have you. So in all the confusion of screen one, screen two, the projector, and not Facebook, but the other thing, Zoom. Um, I didn't write down if we had a motion in a second to oh <laughs> move the remaining funds into the art maintenance fund. You so. still have them, I don't think. I don't think we have. No. Okay. I'll make the motion to move the remaining money from the grants into the maintenance budget. Okay. I'll second. Any other discussion or all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. I mean, I think the fact that a member of the public like reached out to you offering, you know, money to conserve something speaks to the power that these pieces have and the work that this community does. So it's exciting to hear. So do you need anything from us to get the process started of like the a more comprehensive maintenance plan or? I think so. We need to prioritize projects? Cause yeah, I think that'll probably come. We need to do that, though, with more information than we have. I moment. can do some digging to see if conservation plans um, are available from other public art programs and send those to you. Yeah, and we that would be great. And I am pretty sure we had at least um, a bare bones skeleton of one in the strategic, in the strategic plan yeah strategic we did plan done uh probably now four three four years ago mr farrow <laughs> yeah. so we can do that i think if i remember correctly what i read in the strategic plan is more like we need to do this regularly right that's versus that's kind of a financial that's, mm -hmm. that's where we were at yeah. Yeah. yeah an example like you're saying from other that'd be 
need to see. Uh, any other staff updates? Uh, no, let's see. We'll, we'll have the emerging artist and his mentor, uh, Ethan and Ray, in at the June meeting, hopefully to show us the um, final concept that they will have worked out with the South District neighborhood. Um, and in June, we ought to also have the final concept from um, the airport mural artist. Yeah, the, um, they selected, um, if you'll remember back, I didn't bring those slides. Um, they selected the one that was a, a little more graphically oriented and, and less floral. Um, and um, they're gonna work on a few, few of the historical details with her for that, but she should have that um, in the coming month or so so that she can get started as soon in the summer as possible, so. Um, that is about it for staff updates. Um, next month's meeting is the Thursday after Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be out of the country. I don't know if it was possible to, I don't want to miss another meeting. I've, I really do not want to be at that meeting. Oh, I think you're... I'm out of the country also. Somebody's got something going on that weekend, right? Just something, like, I don't know, it's this thing. I don't know, we just put it together, like, last month. So, like, oh, yes. How about a week later? Yes. That, that's fine with me. I just am always, like, I do not want to do things this Thursday before Arts Fest, personally. So yeah. I was actually uh, going to tell you boldly after this meeting, I'm like, I will not be at the June meeting. So what if we, if it was June 8th, would that be better? Because that's after That's Arts fine. Fest. That's fine. Yeah, I'm a happier camper. I'm tired but happy. <laughs> Just not the first. Not the I'd say if it was June 1st, I would not be able to make it. So moving oh, it to June 8th would also work Works out really well, well for then. me. Great. So we'll reschedule it for the 8th. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that. Um, yeah. Um, okay, great. That's it. Then. We need a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, everybody.